Hey guys, and welcome to my very first review video of 2017. Yes, that was a tongue twister. Um, today we're gonna be talking about The Buddha in the Attic by Julie Otsuka. So this is set in the 20th century and follows a group of Japanese picture brides who are leaving their families behind in Japan and moving to the United States to marry men who they know pretty much nothing about. These are Japanese men who have already come over to the States looking for work um, and they've promised their picture brides all of these grand things like a house with um, three rooms, wooden floors, um, they've said that they're bankers and businessmen and yet when these women show up they realize that as people of color in America their husbands are really no more than working class farmers, farmhands, um, inn owners, things like that. I think what makes this a really unique read is um, the way Otsuka wrote it. So the women aren't distinguished like individual characters, but they kind of talk as one big crowd. So in a way, it's kind of similar to the chorus in a Greek comedy or drama, and I guess probably the best way to describe this to you guys would just be to read you the first paragraph. On the boat we were mostly virgins. We had long black hair and flat white feet and we were not very tall. Some of us had eaten nothing but rice gruel as young girls and had slightly bowed legs, and some of us were only 14 years old and were still young girls ourselves. Some of us came from the city and wore stylish city clothes, but many more of us came from the country and on the boat we, were, we, we wore the same old kimonos we'd been wearing for years, faded hand-me-downs from our sisters that had been patched and re-dyed many times. Some of us came from the mountains and had never before seen the sea except for in pictures, and some of us were the daughters of fishermen who had been around the sea all our lives. Perhaps we had a lot Perhaps we had lost a brother or father to the sea, or a fiancé, or perhaps someone we loved had jumped into the water one unhappy morning and simply swum away, and now it was time for us, too, to move on." And this continues through the entire book. Um, Otsuka refers to the Japanese women as a crowd, she refers to them as we, and um, often does this thing where she gives one option for what might have happened in one sentence, and then another, and then another, and then another. I feel like some people are gonna find that super irritating, and I know on Goodreads that was very evident in the reviews. And if I'm honest, I wasn't a huge fan of it myself in the beginning, but as the novel carried on, I kind of got used to it. It didn't end up being as repetitive as I thought it was going to be, and um, the writing does get a little bit more varied as the sections continue. This book is broken down into kind of eight different chunks or sections, but the way I have been thinking about it is a book in kind of two narrative halves. The first half is very much an immigration narrative, so it talks about the women coming over to the States uh, and what it's like trying to assimilate or adapt to a culture and a country that is totally different than your own. Then the second half of the book is very much a narrative of what it's like to be a persecuted minority in the States, and because of those two main themes, I would say that this book is something that we should all be reading right now. Especially here in America where immigration and um, kind of registering distinct minority groups are hot topics at the moment, I think this book is incredibly important, incredibly eye-opening, and just a really good what-if book to read. So if you're wondering what it's like to be an immigrant, read this. If you're wondering what would it look like if we registered an entire group of people and then segregated them from the rest of society, read this. This is honestly a book that I would like to buy several copies of and send to various figures in our government right now. It's such an interesting way of describing these issues, not from one distinct point of view, but from a point of view of an entire group of people. So hopefully that inspires you to pick this up and just to show you how freakishly relevant this narrative still is, I would like to share with you guys one final passage from the section called Traitors. What did we know exactly about the list? The list had been drawn up hastily on the morning of the attack. The list had been drawn up more than one year ago. The list had been existent in existence for almost 10 years. The list was divided into three categories, known dangerous, category A, potentially dangerous, category B, and pro-axis inclinations, category C. It was nearly impossible to get your name on the list. It was extremely easy to get your name on the list. Only people who belonged to our race were on the list. There were Germans and Italians on the list, but their names appeared toward the bottom. The list was written in indelible red ink. 
The list was typewritten on index cards. The list did not exist. The list existed, but only in the mind of the Director of Military Intelligence, who was known for his perfect recall. The list was a figment of our imaginations. The list contained over 500 names. The list contained over 5,000 names. The list was endless. Every time an arrest was made, another name was crossed off the list. Every time a, a name was crossed off the list, a new name was added to it. New names were added to the list daily, weekly, hourly. Overnight, our neighbors began to look at us differently. Insurance companies canceled our insurance. Banks froze our bank accounts. Milkmen stopped delivering milk to our doors. Company orders, one tearful milkman explained. Children took one look at us and ran away like frightened deer. Little old ladies clutched their purses and froze up on the sidewalk at the side of our husbands and shouted, they're here. And even though our husbands had warned us, they're afraid, still we were unprepared suddenly to find ourselves the enemy. So those were just a few thoughts on The Buddha in the Attic by Julie Otsuka, and I really, really would encourage you guys to go pick this up. This is freakishly relevant to right now, like I said, and honestly, I couldn't think of a better way to start off my reading year in 2017. So if you guys have read this previously and would like to share your thoughts with me, I would love to have a discussion about this in the comments below, but otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you um, will go check this out, like I said, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Bye.